Michigan, Ohio, did you know the Black Legion goes to Hollywood Lights Camera Action Michigan Mobsters Movies? Black Legion is a 1937 American crime drama film, directed by Archie Mayo, with a script by Abem Finkel and William Wister Haynes based on an original story by producer Robert Lord. The film stars Humphrey Bogart, Dick Foran, Aaron O'Brien Moore and Anne Sheridan. It is a fictionalized treatment of the historic Black Legion of the 1930s in Michigan, a white vigilante group. A third of its members lived in Detroit. We don't take no lip from nobody. Yeah, that's that stuff. Hit them hard and quick. We ain't afraid of nothing to nobody. Three <laughs> years for the Black Legion. Come on, what's the matter with you? Yeah, you go. Twelve men were tried and eleven convicted of his murder. All were sentenced to life. Authorities prosecuted another 37 men for related crimes. They were also convicted and sentenced to prison, breaking up the Legion. Columbia Pictures had made Legion of Terror, 1936, based on the same case. Black Legion was praised by critics for its dramatization of a dark social phenomenon. It was one of several films of this period in opposition to fascist and racist organizations. Having followed Bogart's breakthrough in The Petrified Forest, 1936, a number of reviewers commented that Bogart's performance should lead to his becoming a major star. Warner Brothers did not give the film any special treatment, however, promoting it and Bogart in their standard fashion. Stardom did come with High Sierra in 1941. Frank Taylor works in a Midwestern factory and expects to receive a job promotion that has become available. When he is passed over in favor of hard-working Polish immigrant Joe Dombrowski, Taylor joins the Black Legion, a secret organization that drives away immigrants and racial minorities through violent means. Dressed in black robes, Taylor and the Black Legion go on a torchlight raid, driving Dombrowski and his family from their home. With Dombrowski gone, Taylor receives the promotion, but when the Black Legion leadership forces him to spend time recruiting new members, Taylor is demoted in favor of his Irish neighbor, Mike Grogan. That night, the Black Legion attacks Grogan. Taylor's co-worker and friend, Ed Jackson, who is married to Grogan's daughter, suspects Taylor is connected to the attacks on immigrants. Jackson mentions his concerns. Come on, what's the matter with yeah, you? Soldier of the Black Legion, you see before you an instrument of death. We give you this half as a symbol of our trust. The other half you will receive the day you betray that trust. Taylor tells Jackson about his secret life with the violent Black Legion. Afraid that a slip of the tongue might prompt Jackson to go to the police, Taylor tells the Black Legion leadership what happened. The leadership orders Taylor to capture and execute Jackson. Unlike the Black Legion's other victims, Jackson is unafraid and threatens to go to the police. When Jackson tries to escape, Taylor panics and shoots him. Taylor is arrested for Jackson's murder. Ruth returns for Taylor's trial to support him. The lawyer for the Black Legion threatens Taylor's wife and son to stop him from implicating the hate organization, but filled with self-loathing, Taylor tells the truth in court. All of the members of the Black Legion are sentenced to life in prison for Jackson's murder. Black Legion went into production in late August, 1936. Many of the details about the Legion portrayed in the film, such as the initiation oath and the confessions in the trial scenes, were based on known facts about the historic organization. Because United States libel laws had recently been broadened in scope by court rulings, Warner Brothers underplayed some aspects of the group's political activities to avoid legal repercussion. The Ku Klux Klan sued Warner Brothers for patent infringement for the film's use of a patented Klan insignia, a white... You've been lying to me. Don't you call me a liar. You are, Frank. You did have something to do with all those terrible things. You and those new friends of yours. You shut up about my friends. I won't. Only a bunch of dirty, contemptible cowards would do a thing like that. Why, you... Executive producer Hal B. Wallace had wanted Edward G. Robinson to play the lead role, but producer Robert Lord thought Robinson was too foreign-looking and wanted a distinctly American-looking actor to play the part. Quotation mark. Writing for Night and Day in 1937, Graham Greene gave the film a good review, characterizing it as an intelligent and exciting, if rather earnest film. Green praises Bogart's acting and comments that the film's intelligence comes from the director's attention to the moments of horror. Comma. Frank S. Nugent of the New York Times praised the film's direction, writing, performances, and strong themes, calling it editorial cinema at its best. Dennis Schwartz from Oz's World Movie Reviews awarded the film a grade B, calling it a gripping social drama based on the newspaper headlines of the day. TV Guide gave the film three out of five stars, calling it a grim, often brutal film, while criticizing Bogart's performance as being unsympathetic and Sheridan's role as thankless. 
Robert Lord's original screenplay received an Academy Award nomination in 1937, but lost to William Wellman and Robert Carson's work for A Star is Born. The National Board of Review named Black Legion as one of the ten best films of 1937, and Humphrey Bogart as one of the best actors of the year for his work in the film. It was one of a series of anti-fascist films in this period that addressed the dangers to society from groups that opposed immigrants especially Catholics and Jews, Asians, and Blacks, showing that fascism and racism resulted in similar crimes against humanity. Quotation mark. Addition Movie Film Resources and References Archives. 1. Jennifer Lynn Barker, The Aesthetics of Antifascist Film, Radical Projection, New York, Rutledge, 2013, pages 64 652 Tatara, Paul, December 7, 2006. Then kill me for telling you. Them Black Legion guys don't fool. I'm not fooling either. You're going to quit that game. I can't get out. Nobody ever lived to get out of the Legion. Tell them! Don't get away! Tell them they're going to get away! Themes and related, all movie, all movie, all movie, Natakshin LLC. Retrieved September 30th, 2022. 4. Black Legion, 1937, Turner Classic Movies. TCM. Turner Classic Movies, Incorporated. Retrieved September 30th, 2022. 5. TCM Overview 6. IMDB Filming Location 7. Green, Graham July 8, 1937. Black Legion Night Must Fall Top of the Town The Last Train from Madrid. Night and Day, reprinted in, Taylor, John Russell, ed. 1980. The Pleasure Dome. Oxford University Press pp. 151-154. ISBN 0192812866, 8. Nugent, Frank, January 18, 1937. The Screen, The Strand's Black Legion is an eloquent editorial on Americanism, conflict opens at the Globe. At the Globe, The New York Times. The New York Times. Retrieved January 24, 2019. 9. Schwartz, Dennis. Black Legion. Sover.net. Dennis Schwartz. Archived from the original on December 12, 2017. Retrieved January 24, 2019. 10. Black Legion. Movie Reviews and Movie Ratings. TVGuide.com. TV Guide. Retrieved January 24, 2019. 11, 1937, 10th, Permanent Deadlink, on Ampus website 12. Almovie Awards, Wikimedia Commons has media related to Black Legion, film. Black Legion at the American Film Institute Catalog Black Legion at the TCM Movie Database Black Legion at All Movie Black Legion at IMDb. Related articles, Storm Warning, 1950 film, 1951 film by Stuart Heisler. The Time, The Place and the Girl, 1946 film, 1946 Technicolor film by David Butler, Legion of Terror 1936 film by Charles C. Coleman. We have a fight that's common to all of us against an enemy who is common to all of us. The political philosophy of black nationalism only means that the black man should control the politics and the politicians in his own community. The, the, time, the time when white people can come in our community and get us to vote for them so that they can be our political leaders and tell us what to do and what not to do is long gone. Oh, By the same token, the time when that same white man, knowing that your eyes are too far open, can send another Negro into the community, get you and me to support him so he can use him to lead us astray, those days are long gone. <laughs> the political philosophy of black nationalism only means that if you and I are going to live in a black community, and that's where we're going to live, because as soon as you move into one of their, as soon as you move out of the black community into their community, it's mixed for a period of time, but they're gone, and you're right there all by yourself. We must, we must understand the politics of our community, and we must know what politics is supposed to produce. We must know what part politics play in our lives. 
And until we become politically mature, we will always be misled, led astray, or deceived or maneuvered into uh, supporting someone politically who doesn't have the good of our community at heart. So the political philosophy of black nationalism only means that we will have to carry on a program, a political program of re-education to open our people's eyes, make us become more politically conscious, politically mature. And then we will, whenever we get ready to cast our ballot, that ballot will be, classed for, uh, will be cast for a man of the community who has the good of the community at heart. And I have a dream. My four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. I must confess that uh, that dream that I had that day has at many points turned into a nightmare. Now, I'm not one to lose hope. I keep on hoping. Uh, I still have faith in the future. But I've had to analyze many things over the last few years, and I would say over the last few months. I've gone through a lot of soul-searching and agonizing moments. And I've come to see that uh, we have uh, many more difficult days ahead, and some of the old optimism was a little superficial, and now it must be tempered with a solid realism. And I think the realistic fact is that we still have a long, long way to go, and that we are involved in a war. It's burned down a building, but you can't establish justice. You can murder a murderer, but you can't murder murder through violence. You can murder a hater, but you can't murder hate. And what we are trying to get rid of is hate and injustice and all of these other things that continue the long night of man's inhumanity to man. When we allow freedom ring. With the guns of war. Uh, it loses its social perspective, and programs of social uplift suffer. This is just a, a fact of history, so that we do face many more difficulties uh, as a result of the war. It's much more difficult to really arouse a conscience during a time of war. That is something about a war like this that makes people insensitive. It dulls a conscience. It strengthens the forces of reaction and it brings into being bitterness and hatred and violence. I think the biggest problem now is... We want to talk about the ballot or the bullet. The ballot or the bullet explains itself. But before we get into it, since this is the year of the ballot or the bullet, I would like to clarify some things that refer to me personally concerning my own personal position. I'm still a Muslim. That is, my religion is still Islam. My religion is still Islam. I still credit Mr. Muhammad for what I know and what I am. He's the one who opened my eyes. And at present, I'm the minister of the newly founded uh, Muslim Mosque Incorporated, which has its offices in the Teresa Hotel, right in the heart of Harlem. That's the Black Belt in New York City. And when we realize that Adam Clayton Powell is a Christian minister, he's the, he has the Abyssinia Baptist Church, but at the same time he's more famous for his political struggling. And Dr. King is a Christian minister. In Atlanta, from Atlanta, Georgia, or in Atlanta, Georgia, but he's become more famous for being involved in the civil rights struggle. There's another in New York, Reverend Galamison. I don't know if you've heard of him out here. He's a Christian minister from Brooklyn, but has become famous for his fight against the segregated school system in Brooklyn. Reverend Cleeg, right here, is a Christian minister here in Detroit. He's the head of the Freedom Now Party. All of these are Christian ministers. All of these are Christian ministers, but they don't come to us as Christian ministers. They come to us as fighters in some other category. I'm a Muslim minister. The same as they are Christian ministers, I'm a Muslim minister. 
And I don't believe in fighting today in any one front, but on all fronts.